Hey guys, it's Endar. Now, if you've played Space Engineers, you probably know about this block, the gravity generator. It's a block that produces an artificial gravity field around it, allowing you to fall and jump and some pretty cool stuff. But what you might not know about it is how it interacts with other blocks, specifically mass blocks. Now, first of all, let's visualize the range of this. So if you go into the info tab, then check show gravity range. And then if you go into the control panel, go to the gravity generator and enable show on hood. It will show you the range of the gravity generator with the green box. Now this is really useful for getting the right range for your ships, because if your range is too big it can interact with other ships. How can it do that, you might ask? Well here I'm going to show you. Now normally in zero gravity, rovers like this one just float around and you can't really do much with them, but if you really want to be able to drive your rover around on a zero gravity platform, like this one here, and you have a gravity generator, then you can use the artificial mass block simply by replacing these and then it will actually be affected by gravity. So the gravity generator has an effect on the mass blocks and pulls the mass blocks down and with it the entire ship. Now since you can create a force using mass blocks in a gravitational field, this has some pretty interesting applications. Here we have a battery and on top of this I'm going to place an artificial mass block as it's powered, you can see it's just falling. But the thing is, this falling is only relative to us, we only really see this as normal gravity because we're used to it on Earth. But since we can manipulate this with the placement of our gravity generators, we can create incredibly powerful engines that the player base calls gravity drives. Now here we have two ships showcasing each of the two types of gravity drives you can build inside of Space Engineers. This first ship uses a generic or linear gravity drive, doesn't require any scripts. However, it does use timer blocks in a smart way to be able to reverse the gravity field. I'll show you in a minute. So if we enter the cockpit, you'll see that on the toolbar there's two timer blocks I was talking about, but then there's the gravity drive itself. Now first of all, I'll show you inside the ship, using spectator camera. So inside this ship, we have a lot of mass blocks, but also some gravity generators. Now since they're pointed in this direction, the effect of gravity on this ship will basically be downwards in the direction of motion that we want the ship to be moving. But for some reason, somebody at Keen decided it would be a good idea if mass blocks could be affected by gravity generators that are on their own grid. So, if we turn these on, our ship just pushes itself forwards like it's falling. Now since this is an incredibly powerful engine, you can just turn dampeners off and then use the gyros to move around. And here you can see, we're incredibly agile. The only problem is, with this kind of gravity drive, you can't really strafe sideways. However, using timer blocks, you can make it so the gravity drive can go in two different directions. For example, let's press this button to decelerate. And as you can see, we've just turned around immensely quickly. Use the other timer block. And we've changed direction again. And this is useful because you can quickly come to a complete stop. And then the ion thrusters, which are usually relatively weak for a heavy armoured ship, can slow the ship to a full stop. Now ignore these two timer blocks because they're just for different stuff on the ship. But we've got two timer blocks operating the gravity drive. Accelerate and decelerate. Now it's pretty simple. In the, if you go to set of actions, we've, we've got nine identical groups of gravity generators. Each so they can all have their own slot on the toolbar. And every single one of them is selected to increase acceleration and same on the next tab and the next tab so for three of the toolbars now it should immediately set every single gravity generator to have maximum acceleration once it's pressed the opposite goes for decelerate it's just three toolbars of decrease acceleration now here in the toolbar you can see the nine different gravity generator groups but you can see that here is the acceleration bar. This is what the timers move around. Having 1.0 G makes it go forwards, and having negative 1.0 G makes it go backwards. Now this linear design of Gravity Drive is extremely useful if you're playing on official servers or any other servers where scripts aren't available. But if scripts are available, then you can make a much more powerful and versatile Gravity Drive. For example, here we have the SG class. You might remember it from some of my videos. It's a ship that has a scripted gravity drive that can accelerate really quickly in all three directions. And as another bonus, it's also incredibly easy to use. As you can see in the toolbar, there's no clunky groups and timer blocks you need to operate to do this. It can simply be operated using WASD, just like any normal ship. Now these scripted three-axis gravity drives are actually much easier to set up than linear gravity drives. So as you can see in the toolbar, if we scroll all the way up, there's just a group called G-Drive. It contains all the artificial masses, all the gravity generators, and also somewhere here there should be the cockpit in it as well. 
Um, yeah, here we are, the control seat. So if we go to the programmable block, now here we can see that we've got a gravity drive script from the workshop loaded inside of it. Now depending on what script you use from the workshop, the setup might be quite different. For example, this one uses the group G drive. Other gravity drive scripts might have a different group name. Some of them might be more responsive, some of them might have different features, like better or lack of dampeners. But I like this one because dampeners can be turned off just like any other thruster with Z. However, the construction of these kinds of gravity drives are different from linear gravity drives. If we go into the core of this ship, you'll see we've got four gravity generators facing forwards. I know this is a bit annoying with all these blocks in the way, I'm sorry, but... Um, then there's two sideways. Now, you might see that these are facing in opposite directions. Don't worry, the script should automatically set the right accelerations for your gravity generators. And then there's also two facing up and down. So you can see that there's gravity generators in all three axes. So if we go forwards, we accelerate forwards. If we go up, we accelerate upwards. And if we go right, then we accelerate to the right. Now this is thanks to the script automatically selecting which gravity it should turn on to achieve the acceleration in the desired direction. Now that you've had a quick rundown on how they work, it's time for me to show you how you can build your own gravity drive ship. So first of all, let's just make sure that this gravity generator is turned off, because if we have this on, then it will affect the ship we're constructing, and chances are it'll just slam into the floor, and we don't really want that. So we're going to start with a simple linear gravity drive. We'll start with a the cockpit, then just a few reactors so we can power the ship. This isn't going to be anything very extravagant, by the way. We'll place the ion thrusters so it can move, making sure that they're placed in all directions. Now the thing with all gravity drives is it's incredibly important that it's all balanced. If we go into the info tab and then show center of mass, this ship is a center of gravity perfectly in the middle because we've balanced everything. And you'll see if we place a big rod of armor blocks, it's going to shift the center of mass. If we add even more blocks off center, you can see the center of mass is now over here. Now I'll show you why that's a bad idea once we get it up and running. So before we place the mass block and gravity generator, I'm just going to quickly convert this to a station. Therefore when we place them both down, it's not going to start moving immediately. Unlike everyone, I forgot my gyroscope, so don't forget your gyroscope guys. So as you can see, the gravity generator is active. Now if we hadn't converted to station, it would be just like that rover and flying away. So now I'm going to set up the very simple controls for this gravity drive. So in the toolbar setup, we go to the artificial mass, drag it down, and then select top of lock on slash off. And then now we make sure that's off. We go into info, convert to ship, and there we have it. We have a nice basic ship. Not too bad acceleration with normal ions, but once we turn the gravity drive on, you'll see we start accelerating. Now this isn't very fast compared to some of the other ships I've shown you. Adding more mass blocks will increase the acceleration, and so will adding more gravity generators. Here you can see I've added three gravity generators, and now if we turn the one mass block on, we accelerate much faster. And so does adding more mass blocks, however if you want to turn these on and off, you'll have to use a group. Put it in the toolbar, toggle block on and off, set it to ship, and then here we are, we're accelerating really quickly this time. So, remember what I said about keeping your center of mass in the center of the grid? Well, here I'm going to show you what happens if it's not in the center of the grid. Using heavy armor blocks, which are extremely heavy, if you place a big stick of them, we've moved the center of mass to below the common center of all these mass blocks. And as a consequence, if we accelerate the gravity drive, we've got a lot of torque being produced. And the same thing goes if the mass blocks are also off center. Now the final and most complicated thing you might want to know about linear gravity drives is how to alternate forwards and backwards using timer blocks. So we're going to place two timer blocks either side of the ship. This is just to make sure that it's still balanced. Then we go into the control panel. And just for reference sake, I'm going to rename these Axel and Decel. Now before we set up these timers, we need to create nine separate groups for the gravity generators. I'm just going to do G1, G2, G3, and so on until we get to G9. So now we can set up the timer blocks themselves, we go into Setup Actions, go to Groups, and we've got all these nine groups. So in the first timer block we set every single one of these groups to increase acceleration. Then press Full Stop to go to the second page of the toolbar, and then do the exact same thing. And then finally the third one. And you just do the opposite for the decelerate timer block decrease acceleration for all three pages of the toolbar.
So now that these are all set up, we can go into the toolbar configuration and then select trigger now for each of the timer blocks. So let's activate the gravity drive. We're going forwards. And that's because all these grips have acceleration in the positive. But then when we press 3 to activate timer block decelerate, you can see we're decelerating. And this is because the gravity generator's acceleration has been reversed. And then we can turn it back to positive again by using the other timer block. And if you want to come to a stop, decelerate, wait until the speed is zero, turn off the gravity drive and turn on dampeners so your thrusters can bring you to a complete stop. And that is everything you need to know about linear gravity drives. You can use this concept to build your own combat ship or do whatever you want with it. Remember this can be expanded almost indefinitely as long as you have the PCU. So now I'm going to show you the arguably simpler scripted gravity drive. Let's place down the cockpit, add a power source, and then convert it to station. Now most of the ships that I've seen using this kind of gravity drive are all built around the gravity drive core. So we're just going to surround the cockpit with artificial mass blocks for now. And inside of this core we're also going to place the programmable block. Now since the centre of mass isn't perfectly aligned, I'm going to place another reactor up here just to offset it slightly so it's more or less in the centre. So now we can start placing down the gravity generators. Since it's static, remember, it won't move around. And although it's not important to balance the gravity generators themselves, since they do have a mass, it's a good idea to do that anyway. So the generators are placed, now we just need the thrusters so it can move around. And not forgetting gyroscopes, we have the very basic ship itself. So if we go into the programmable block and then go into edit, you can now input the script. Now, scripting in Space Engineers is quite difficult. I don't even know how to script. But thankfully, there's tons of scripts available on the Steam Workshop. So we can go to the Browse Scripts and from the list of scripts on the Workshop, here we've got Gravity Drive Manager, which is the one I like to use. I'll leave a link in the description. Copy to Editor, check Code to Compile It, press OK. And you'll see that there's an error. No group with name tag G Drive was found. And the G Drive group needs to contain all artificial masses, cockpit, and the gravity generators. And now that we've selected them all using Control Click and Shift Click, we go into Block Group and then name it G Drive. And then save that. Now we've got the group, the programmable block should say running, and you, as you just saw there, they're all off now because there's no input. So if we convert this back to a ship and then press W, the gravity drive ship just moves forwards. And it goes sideways if we press D and up if we press space. Now, unfortunately, it is using quite a bit of power. Might want to put a few more reactors on it. And there's also a bit of torque. Now, as long as you balance your center of mass more or less with the common center of all the mass blocks, you should be fine. But a small amount of torque doesn't really hurt. But as you can see, we've now got dampeners, full control. We can strafe super quickly. And this kind of core can be built on. You can expand on it and build a very powerful warship. And if you've seen any of my videos on the PvP servers, this is basically what all battleships use to repel themselves. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today. I'm hoping this has inspired you to go on to build your own gravity drive ship with which you can take over the universe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. End our out.